applause going for John J. Reed. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I hear through the grapevine that this guy is holding an Obama fundraiser in his apartment. Uh, he lives in that building, I think it's called Red Square on East Houston Street. It has the statue of Lenin on the roof and the clock with the numbers are all wonky. And um, uh, I want to go for two reasons. One, because I really want Obama to win, but also because I made this deal with myself that I'm going to kind of like try to get out there, you know, and try to like socialize. I hadn't really dated for like 10 years, which is, you know, another story for a different moth. But that's the way it was. And um, so, I, so the guy who holds this fundraiser is just so friggin' goofy. He is, um, he's like uh, uh, Adam Sandler, both in personality and in appearance, but with like a shitload of Woody Allen neurosis thrown in there. You know, it's like his face, he will smile and not smile, you know, alternately, but it seems not connected to anything that's happening in the room, right? <laughs> you know? And, um, you know, he's or like one of those, he never makes eye contact, you know, like one of those cat clocks where the tail goes and the eyes are like that, you know? He never, he never makes eye contact. Goofy, goofy, goofy. But in the next couple of days, I just can't stop thinking of him. And it's partly because he had this fundraiser. And, you know, it's just like people who do things really turn me on. So I call him and he says, he'll go out with me. And uh, we do for, the first two dates are coffee dates. We can't really talk. We both have time. We have to go somewhere else. And, um, also in very busy, loud places, so we really can't figure too much out except that we want a third date. So the third date, we go to Caravan of Dreams, which is a funky vegan place on East 6th Street. And the first thing I notice when we walk in is they have votive candles on the table, and my body clenches. You know, like, uh, like most people, when I'm dining, you know, I'll just kind of put my hands on the table, and it just so happens that votive candles are at just the right height to kind of shine light on your wrists. And uh, on this wrist, I have some very almost not noticeable scars at all. But on this wrist, I have a really intense, violent one. And I, I, you know, I'm ashamed of it. You know, so I, I spend the dinner kind of like trying to hide my hand and not put it up there. But so we're talking about you know, learning about each other. <laughs> he, uh, he tells me that during the day, he works on Wall Street. But at night, he calls himself the wizard. And he is a white, gay, Jewish rapper. <laughs> and, <laughs> And he sings a lot about dick, which, you know, it's, it, you know, it's like it's all, it's information, you know, it's information. So I'm, collect, I'm collecting, it's all right, you know, it's good, it's good, right? And, and um, I also have to tell him that I am HIV positive, which um, he, he seems to take in stride, you know, and I'm like, whew, you know, that's like one, one hurdle I have to get over, I got over. And, uh, and then he even says that we should go to this dive bar on 14th Street. And we do. And the walls are surrounded by these couches and chairs that, you know, I swear to God, look like they were just pulled right off the street. You know, and my first thought is bed bugs, you know, <laughs> bed bugs, you know. Uh, and, uh, but my second thought is, you know, I really want to go to town on this guy. So, 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 so we, we plop down on this couch and just start making out, you know. And nothing really serious, you know, I, I you know, I hold his like perky little wizard butt, you know, but that's about it. That's about, you know, all we do. And, uh, and, then, and, then, and then we go our own way. Um, and I'm going, uh, and we went to our own homes is what I'm trying to say. And then I, 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 uh, I was going out of town for the weekend to a place that had no email access and I didn't have a, you know, smartphone at that point. So all weekend long, I'm just hoping and hoping and hoping that he's emailed me. And I get home and I see that he has and I'm really excited. And I click on it and I'm just taken aback, you know. Uh, it's, this email is just full of rage. And uh, it starts a conversation that goes back and forth between us and it's 10 pages long. And I know that because I printed it out and I've saved it for posterity. But, um, you know, he basically says, how dare you keep this information from me? And I'm like, whoa, listen, if you have a problem with HIV, I totally, I get that, I get that, but, you know, don't, don't dump it on me, you know, I mean, you know, that's, it's really not fair. It's kind of like you're asking me on our first date to like hand you a resume with all my physical and emotional and, you know, familial issues on it, you know, like, and, and I'm not, you know, asking that of you. And I got to tell you, if you're a gay white Jewish rapper who calls himself the Wizards, there's got to be some fucking neurosis in there, you know, <laughs> you know, but, but I want to find it out, you know, as time goes on, it unfolds naturally, but that doesn't seem to be the same courtesy you're willing to afford me, you know, so. 
we never we never see each other again. But over the next couple of days, I'm just really this is in my craw. I'm really angry about it. And when when something hits me that hard, I kind of try to take a moment and you know, make space for it. And go, what the hell is going on? And I realized that the thing was he was attacking my integrity. He you know this you know quality of my who I am that I really take seriously, and that he was specifically doing it around HIV just enraged me. You know, I've been positive since I was 21 years old in 1986, so 28 years. So I've been some some dark, dark shit. You know, I've been in a lot of hospitals for myself, for my lovers, for clients. I counsel people with terminal illness. So I've been through it. And the idea that I would hide this from somebody, it was just enraging me so much. And I <laughs> decided what I would do is go to New York Adorns, which is on 2nd Avenue and 2nd Street, and I got a tattoo. And it says... 1986, HIV positive. And um, there have been a couple of consequences of this. The obvious one is that nobody has ever, ever accused me of not revealing my status, <laughs> you know, which I expected. That's what I did it for. What I didn't expect is that because it's kind of got this shock factor, since I have had it put on, no one, at least that I know of, has noticed the scar underneath. So it's like this thing that I really am not ashamed of, and in a way am proud of, that I have managed to survive and that I have been through this, has eclipsed this thing about which I have a great deal of shame. You know, Totally didn't expect it. And the last thing I got from it is that I can go to any restaurant I want, and if there are votive candles on the, ta on the table, I can just enjoy the light. Thank you. <laughs> John J. Reed.